Hello everyone, welcome to this video on prepayments and overpayments in Xero. I'm Adam Moore, product owner of the Accounting API, and today I'll be explaining what pre and overpayments are and how they can be used in the Xero API. Firstly, what's the difference between a prepayment and overpayment? Um, well, actually, similarity first, they can both be used when you're spending or receiving money, so money coming from to or from a supplier or to or from a customer. Um, but the purpose of them are, are slightly different. So a prepayment is for deliberate payments made in advance. So examples of that are say, an annual subscription uh, paid in advance or a deposit for work that's going to be invoiced later on. And overpayment is more like a transaction to park some money in until it's going to be paid back. So usually used when too much money has been paid by mistake. Uh, for that reason, there's a couple of practical differences between them as well. So prepayments, you're allowed to specify the general ledger account um, that it goes towards. So usually a sales account or some other revenue account, and you can apply tax to it. Overpayments always go to the accounts payable if it's a spend, or accounts receivable uh, if it's a receive, and you can't apply tax to them because it's basically just holding cash that you're, you're going to pay back eventually. So this is particularly um, talking about the API, but what does the life cycle of a, a prepayment or overpayment look like? Um, first of all, you create one via the bank transaction endpoint, and you give it one of those four types that you can see on the screen, spend prepayment, spend overpayment, receive prepayment, or receive overpayment. Behind the scenes, that then creates the actual prepayment or overpayment that can be allocated or refunded. and as I said, you can uh, allocate or apply those to an invoice or you can refund the money um, through the payments endpoint. So prepayments generally get applied to invoices and overpayments generally get refunded. So enough for the boring introduction, let's see what it looks like um, in real life. So I've just created a test company in live here uh, called Tesco and I've set up one account my BNZ account and I've given that an account code of 090 and first up I'm going to create a prepayment so in the uh, in the UI sorry you'd come up here and go spend or receive money create a prepayment uh, but I'm going to give it a go via the API so this is my hacky public app uh, because I'm a product owner I'm not a very good developer but it does let me set the method the endpoint a couple of headers but we won't be using them today and the payload and so to, to start off, as I said, we create a bank transaction. So we're going to be doing a put to the bank transactions endpoint. And I've cooked up some XML earlier. And I'll just quickly run through what these elements are for. So this is uh, a type receive prepayment. So my company has received money from a customer. Uh, you need to specify the contact with the contact ID. Specify which bank account with the bank account code. Um, whether or not it's inclusive, exclusive of tax. And then just the line item details. So in this example, it's a prepayment for some designs. Uh, $500, the account code. Uh, 200 which is my sales account and tax type of output 2 which is uh, the GST uh, tax in New Zealand. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that. Cool, 200, okay, let's take a bit of a look at that. So uh, it's just in the response, it's got all the details of the bank transaction that's been created and the one thing that we really need to look out for is down, or that we're going to need later on, is the prepayment ID. So, as I said, the uh, prepayment gets now created behind the scenes, uh, and this is the ID for it. So I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard. Um, we should also be able to see in the Zero UI that that prepayment's now been created in my bank account. Here it is for Mr. Customer. And in the UI, like in the API, this you can sort of see the two parts to it. So this is the, the bank transactions part, but if we click here, um, it links through to the actual prepayment. And this is the thing uh, that we can apply to a sales invoice uh, later on. So but 
So you could come up in the corner here and go allocate credit, um, but we're going to do it via the API instead. So I'm going to come back to my public app. And let's just quickly first do a get of that prepayment just to see what it looks like. So, um, one thing you might be looking at if you haven't just created the prepayment and maybe you've got back a whole collection of them is just down the bottom here where it says uh, how much remaining credit is uh, still to be allocated. So, in this instance, we just created it, so um, it's got $500 to be allocated. So, let's come back again and we're going to do a we're going to allocate this credit by doing a put to the prepayments endpoint. Uh, with the ID of the prepayment, and now I'm just going to add allocations at the end. I'm going to need the second of my pre-prepared XMLs. This one's pretty simple. So for an allocation, uh, all we need is the amount we're going to be allocating and the invoice ID, which I grabbed earlier, uh, to allocate against. So go ahead and submit that. Cool, 200 OK. And it's not very exciting, but we know that that's gone ahead successfully. So now if I refresh the UI, cool, I can see this prepayment has now been allocated to invoice uh, 0001 for the full 500 and there's nothing left. And that's it, happy days for the prepayment. So um, yeah, that's all there is to it. Uh, next up, I'll quickly go through the uh, life cycle of a bank transaction. So let's just come back to my bank. Oh, sorry, we're going to go through overpayments and, and, and refunding and overpayment. So come back into here. And cool. So normally you come in, manage account, spend, receive money, create your overpayment. Uh, but we're going to do it for the API again, so we're going to go back to our trusty bank transactions endpoint. I'm going to do a put there for a create. Get my third piece of pre prepared XML. And this looks very similar to our, our prepayment, but slightly simpler. So this is a spend over payment, so I've effectively given my supplier too much money um, by mistake. Uh, need the contact ID for my supplier, need the bank account code of the bank account, which is the same one. Uh, this time it's no tax because you can't put tax on overpayments. And so just a note in the description, forgot to cancel my auto payment, so it went through uh, for $2,000. Let's go ahead and submit that one. Cool. That one's successful. And just like with the prepayment, um, the overpayment has an ID down the bottom of the overpayment that's being created in the background. So I'm just going to grab that for my clipboard. And let's just take a look at my bank account in the UI. And we can see an overpayment has been created for Mr. Supplier. Again, there's the bank transaction component of it. And also, if you click through the UI, you can see the overpayment part of it. And once you're ready to refund it, you, you make the payment down the bottom here. But we'll do that by the API. So back to my app. And let's just quickly do a get on overpayments. Just to see what it looks like. Cool. And all the usual stuff, contact, the line item, and just like with the prepayment down the bottom here, we can check how much credit's remaining, and we just created it for $2,000, so we know that there's $2,000 uh, that we need to refund. So how do we do a refund via the API? We use the payments endpoint, 
so I'm going to need to do a put payments and then I'm going to grab the last of my XML again pretty simple um, first thing you need is the overpayment ID from that overpayment which I need to grab from my previous response Just pop that in there. Uh, the bank account, which the refund's being uh, paid out of, and the amount, and you can put a reference in there just to add some notes. I'll go ahead and press submit. Cool, and that overpayment has successfully been refunded. If I come back to the UI, refresh that page and you can see the overpayment now has this cash refund of two thousand dollars which is the payment that we've just created and its remaining credit is zero and that's the end of the life cycle for an overpayment so just to recap on um, what we did um, first we created and applied a prepayment to an invoice um, using the API we did that by doing a put bank transactions to create it uh, we then did a get prepayments to, to get that prepayment back and then we applied the prepayment to the invoice by doing a put prepayments prepayment ID allocations. Uh, we then created and refunded an overpayment so you do that by creating the bank transaction by put bank transactions you can get the overpayment back to check the balance by get overpayments and then you create the refund by doing a put payment score. And that's about it. Um, as always, you can find out more info on the Developer Center. I've got the links for prepayments and overpayments there, but also check out Bank Transactions page and the Payments page. And if you've got any questions, jump onto the Zero Developer community.